All right, so we're back, and we're talking about some wrestling lessons, and actually, there's a lot more within this that I even, when I did research on it, uh, I raised a couple of eyebrows, and let's talk about MLW, because MLW is a weird one, because not only did they come back as a full-blown promotion, but that was not their original intention, so MLW ended their original shows in 2004. They were one of the companies that tried to capitalize on the WCW and ECW buyouts where a lot of those wrestlers left to kind of combat yeah, that sort just of... just like everyone else did. Was, right. Was, we talked about it a little bit earlier with the, the initial wave. Right. But now here's, here's the difference with MLW because MLW came back originally... Not as a full-fledged wrestling promotion, but as a podcast network. Actually, they started doing this in 2000, or 2017. Mm-hmm. Kind of the same thing what Conrad Thompson and Ad Free Shows is doing now. They actually did something very similar where they had a website where they hosted a bunch of different wrestling podcasts. And they promoted them per week. So some of the shows were Kevin Sullivan's show, Jim Duggan had a show, MVP had a show, current executive of WWE, Bruce Pritchard, AEW commentator Tony Schiavone had a show on there, and Eric Bischoff had a show on there. So it actually had a couple of heavy hitters. Now, in 2017, a, a, a little bit after that, a little bit after when they started this, they were talking about running some one-off shows, starting with MLW's One Shot. Now, One Shot, I am not kidding you, was supposed to be a one-off independent supercard like All In. It was literally the same principle. They had 200 fans in the building, and they had a nine-match card main evented by Shane Strickland taking on Ricochet. Oh, shit, that would have been sweet. But other matches included MVP versus Sammy Callahan, Maxwell Jacob Friedman versus Jimmy Yuta. It's not Wheeler Yuta, by the way. And Tommy Lawler, Jeff Cobb, and many more. The success of One Shot actually sort of predicated to where they wanted to do a weekly television show. So that's this is where that started in 2017. And now today... MLW is a show that Pina Gallery and I are seriously considering adding to the lineup because they're doing so much. There's a lot of... They're not doing super cards. Well, right. They're doing super cards, but they're, they're filming it as like regular shows. So. Right. It's, it's kind of weird, and it's really hard to distinguish the difference between them. Because like, well, is it the super card? Is it the same... Because they have a sort of mix where Ring of Honor would have like a definitive super card, pay-per-view, etc. And then the TV tapings. Right. Same venue, different times. Great. But here, it's a little bit different. And MLW, once again, is a great company with – they have they have a decent budget behind them. And they're still making some big waves. Once again, creativity, great thing. And they actually own a lot of um, uh, Lucha Underground, which I'm hoping they do something with soon. They are Azteca Underground. Yeah, Azteca Underground, but it's not like an independent show. Well, of course not. You didn't think they were going to do that. Oh, did I did I mix up my timing here? Oh, yes, I did. Okay, so let's talk about so number four. Sorry, my bad. All right, let's talk about oh, oh wow, women's of wrestling. Nick. Once again, we have a powerhouse. With the current LA Lakers owner, Jenny Brett, I think her name was. And also her um, her involvement with Viacom, the original owner. They had a big supercar show. But the problem with their revival show back in 20, 2019 was that there was a distinction like MLW where... You didn't know what the supercard was compared to what that was. But this was a brand that died, and it was revived, and it's making waves within the scope of professional wrestling. This is where Tessa Blanchard is. 
This is where she has been. AJ Lee is the executive producer of this show. And constantly, we, we get we get comments all the time wanting to talk about women of wrestling. Actually, women's wrestling is our most requested add-on show of any other promotion above MLW is women wrestling. So it might be something to talk about. And I'll be honest with you, I would actually want to include a all women's event because it would be something very much different. Subscribe to our Patreon. Yes. We'll <laughs> That's watch, how you get it. <laughs> we'll watch that shit live and it'll be awesome. Now, I Impact is weird. I want to talk about this. Impact never died. It never died, but... It got close. It got close, but also the regime change. Yes. And I think because it didn't have to die to not be the same. We had TNA, where they went from the... So they had four distinct, like, eras, eras of the show. So we had our Spike TV era. Well, back. no, before that, we even... No, even... no, that's... Well, no, the, the Spike TV era was the first era of syndicated television because oh, yeah, before that... We were talking about the pay-per-views. Pay-per-views were a different era on those, its yeah, own. Those were weekly pay-per-views. That was a much different era than weekly television. And that's what I want to talk about. WoW has weekly television on Viacom. And everybody else has weekly television where Impact Wrestling did not at the time... And there wasn't really like a big super card event with TNA. It was just another show where the right. where the spike where the spike TV one was much different because that was, you know, around what, two thousand it was October first, two thousand five, and that was the debut. And that was right after their first pay per view event. Yep, that was our first um, paper the monthly our, monthly pay per view. Yeah, event. that was like Victory Road 2005, which I think was like November. Yep. Or something and then like that. they or then was that it was Victory Road. Yeah, it was Victory Road, and then they did their first TNA Impact show on Spike TV, and their first big debut was Team 3D, which is now synonymous with Impact Wrestling or TNA at that time. I mean, I'm sorry when I think. Bubba Ray and Devon Dudley, at least for my generation, I think them and TNA. I also, well, they're the Dudley boys in WWE, right? And ECW, but Team 3D and Impact. They they were much bigger stars then. So let's talk about a few years later, in 2008, they had their first live show in Las Vegas at the. Um, they were at oh god, what was it? The Red Rock um, Hotel. Oh really. Yeah, and their live show where Booker T introduced the TNA Legends champion, and they had a bunch of this different things on there. This was a Monday show, right? Yes. This is when they went HD. This was not the Hogan-Bischoff era. That's what we're going to talk about here in a minute. The Hogan-Eric Bischoff era in 2010 started, and that was kind of when they did the four-sided ring, they went back to Thursdays. Well, they, they kind of did a couple of different things. But then let's talk about the current era, which started in 2017, which is the Anthem era. Because no matter who was Fuck booking... Fuck the owl. I'm just kidding. <laughs> because, no matter, because right now, isn't Impact still owned by the owl? Yeah, yeah, is. they're still owned by the owl. They're still owned by the owl. <laughs> they they had they had a couple of different. Yeah, areas. I remember those days. I remember the days of fuck the owl. Right, they had a couple of different iterations of this era, and they finally started to click to where people are like, okay, that's fine. They reinvented themselves so many times. Oh, they absolutely have. But at the same time, those were four distinct shows. We had you know TNA. We we had TNA on Spike. We had TNA HD, we had the Hogan-Bischoff era, and then we had the Anthem era. Right. Those are the four for Impact, where a, where a company that started in, you what, missed, 2002? Yeah, you missed a couple of, well, what, even... Those, within, are, those, are, those are sub-eras. Right. I'm, I'm talking about big era changes. Yeah. And that's Cause, what cause I wanted I, to focus I would, on. I would argue even within Anthem, there are like three different right. iterations. That, of that's, that's, a, right, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> I mean, they came hell, by three different colors of their fucking... Right. The, the, whole, the whole thing of Impact Wrestling can be literally its entire show. We can make a series out of that right. shit. Right. We can, we can literally 
Because this is a company that will not die. And I'm, it, from, I'm glad. Okay, moving on. Right, absolutely. I'm, I'm glad then. Now, let's talk about, finally, WWE. Because WWE has a distinction of having two different versions of what we're talking about. And let's talk about Saturday night's main event. The original show aired May 10th, 1985, with four, four matches on the card. We had the U.S. Express and Ricky Steamboat taking on Nikolai Volkov, the Iron Sheik, and George Steele. Hulk Hogan defended the WWF champion against Bob Orton. Wendy Richter defended the women's champion against the fabulous Moolah. And the main event, I'm not kidding you, this was the main event. Junkyard Dog taking on Pete Doherty. Cute. That was the first Saturday night's main event. A show, when you say Saturday night's main event, you think wrestling. That's wrestling. And they did that for a very long time up until 1992. Because the first era ended on that show, and it made a comeback in 2006. You really? remember? Was it that long ago? Yeah. Damn. It was 2006 was the second era of the Saturday Night's main event. That one had five matches on the card. We had Big Show be defeating Carlito. We had John Cena and Triple H defeating Kurt Angle, Rey Mysterio, and Randy Orton because that was around WrestleMania 20... 22. 22? No. Rey Mysterio and Randy Orton. That was... No, Ray, no, it was a Kurt Angle, Ray Mysterio, Randy Orton. That was, that was WrestleMania 22. Uh-huh. And it was, um, yeah, because John Cena and Triple H, because JBL had another thing. Right. So we had um, Steve Austin over JBL in the beer drinking contest. You remember JBL pouring the beer through yep. his shirt instead of drinking the beer? <laughs> so cool, turning his head around. Oh, you got to love it. But that, was the, that was the reincarnation of Saturday Night's main event. I preferred Superstars at the time. Right. At, at the time. That's how I discovered Adelita Sway, by the way. Who? Adelita Sway, the band, was through Superstars because the original theme song. Was oh, like, really? Yeah, that was an Adelita Oh, Sway that's song. right. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm talking about a little bit of nostalgia there. That's a juxtaposition. <laughs> um, Mickey James and R Truth. Or, no, I'm sorry. Um, Mickey James and Trish Stratus. I don't know why it went. Um, Trush. My, my spell check is amazing. Wow. Um, Defeated Candice Michelle and Victoria, and the show's main event was Shawn Michaels went over Shane McMahon in a street fight. Cool. So, no, Shane McMahon defeated Shawn Michaels in a street fight. Ah, Excuse me. He will. But at the same time, that was cool. And that ended, so the first show was in, like, early, early uh, 2008. It ended on July 28th, 2008, and actually in a couple of days, in six days, Saturday Night's main event is going to be making a comeback for house shows starting April 16th of this year. Cool. So um, there's a bunch of those shows that are going to be happening. There are going to be house shows that are going to be happening on Saturday, just like the OGs. And I think there's actually talks about those being streamed on Peacock as well. And I guess that was actually a request from Peacock to bring back that nostalgia-esque sort of thing. Which, right, because people want to watch it. Right. I don't think that's a bad idea, to be honest with you. If, if they're already doing a house show on mm-hmm. Saturdays, might as well make it something interesting, right? You don't have to be entrances for that. Anyways, right. is let's that talk, all you got? Nope. nope. Let's talk about one more. Let's talk uh, about... <laughs> we have to talk about this, don't we? Well, because here's the thing. All right, so ECW, like, back in 2006 when Paul Heyman was running things was fine. Then they all went to shit after. Right. So it was after, like, after, after December that I wish I would forget. Right. So um, WWE bought ECW, and it was dormant up until 2006, where that was when they made the announcement of bringing it back. But the problem was is that that was not the – revival show of the ECW. It took them another month and a half to bring that back. Yeah, because they didn't need to do that until like September. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, in the 2006 six. edition of ECW One Night Stand, they had seven matches on the card. Obviously with Rob Van Dam winning the WWE Champion. The night after, they brought back the ECW Champion and gave it to Rob. 
But then we had our first ECW show, which obviously was absolute garbage and where Sabu won a 10-man battle royal to become the next number one contender. Yep. He faced the big show because Rob Van Dam got popped for steroids. We had the Sandman beating up a zombie. The all the fun stuff with that ECW. I will say, man, this thing. sounds like WWE in 2021, <gasps> right? It kind of does. But at the same time, even though that first show of ECW was kind of lame, I liked the show because it felt so different. It felt very grungy. It wasn't the WWE, let's put it that way. Right, it wasn't the WWE. You had the originals. It was on a much smaller platform. There was still something different overall of that ECW. And I think that's kind of where I wanted to end it because revival shows can take all different shapes and forms from an actual death and revival like ECW, like GLOW, to a reinvention where they have a big show to kick off that reinvention like they did with Impact Wrestling going to Vegas and introducing a bunch of shit to, you know, the ECW One Night Stand where it was a physical property and then they brought it back officially after the success of the One Night Stand show. And I want to talk about this because we had Super Card of Honor. Where it goes from now, we don't know. But we're, we're went from independent wrestling promotion to AEW light, dark, dark, dark. Right. <laughs> it, 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 it went to the it, it went to the light version of Bud Light. So yeah, pretty much now. No, it's the light version of White Claw because that's what Tony Khan likes to drink. <laughs> Ow. Ow. You really don't like Tony Khan, don't you? I didn't say I hated Tony Khan. I just. You know, you're he's, indifferent. He's not my friend. <laughs> he's not your friend. He's not your buddy. He's not a guy. Yeah, we're not friends on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> he's not my friend. <laughs> I kind of want him to be. So when we come back, let's talk about NXT uh, stand and deliver. Okay, we'll talk so about we'll that. be back. <laughs> 